Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Just a quick announcement, tomorrow it's going to be Thanksgiving Day here in the United States. And for all of those who watch me from the United States, I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving Day and I hope your families have a great day and you have a great time together. For those of you around the world who watch me, I want to thank you. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for having faith in me for delivering information that you enjoy and that you want to watch. So that's my thanks for this year. Thank you guys for watching my channel. We have reached 17,200 subscribers and it just keeps growing every day. So thank you guys so much. Plus, I want to remind everybody, you can become a member to the eBuzz channel for just 99 cents. At the beginning of 2023, the MVP, VIP, and Pro levels are all going to go away, and everything's going to be the eBuzz Central member or the eBuzz Central producer. It's 99 cents. I'm making it affordable, so you can support the channel and support the content you like. And also, I want to say thank you to all my present members. Let me go ahead and close out of that. If you haven't got a chance to watch my previous video on Vanilla OS, please check it out. It's a great distribution. It's immutable. And then it's not at the same time, which is pretty awesome. Today, we're going to cover an Arch-based distribution that I covered about four months ago, and I really liked it. But the most recent release, which was on the 19th of November, is out. I'm downloading it. I'm going to throw it into a virtual machine, and we're going to take a look at it. And that operating system is... Kashi OS. Right here, you come to their website. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. And it just basically states a Linux distribution based on Arch Linux. Their goal is to provide you better speed, security, and ease of use. Now, I have praised Garuda. I like Garuda. But some of you out there think Garuda is bloated. If you think Garuda is bloated, Kashi OS is definitely an alternative for you, especially if you want to be on an Arch distribution. Now, if you scroll down here, they got some pictures, and then they've got features, security, and speed. It's a Linux distribution based on Arch. The default Linux kernel is Linux Calcul, which is the Arch Linux stock kernel, plus the Calcul CPU scheduler. That kind of helps with resource management and also takes care of making operations inside the operating system a little bit more snappier. But what is beautiful about it, they do have a kernel manager inside the operating system. So if you want to change kernels, they make it pretty simple for you. It comes in KDE Plasma. It's got a great installer, kernel support, and a better browser. It's the Catchy OS browser. Now, what's great about it is it is based on Firefox, but kind of with that catchy feel, and they put their own twist to it. Plus, they got some pretty awesome themes. Out of the box, it is a very beautiful operating system, so we'll look at that as well. And it's got the most powerful features. The installer will auto-detect which micro-architecture your machine has got. If it's x86-64 v3 is detected, it will automatically use the optimized packages for that. And then, of course, the Linux kernels, security, and then if you like what you see, you can donate. You can help them out on PayPal, Bitcoin, however you want to help them. And, of course, it's supported by Fost Host. And then you can follow them up on their Discord or on Telegram. So I'm going to scroll back to the top here. And then up here, you've got Home and then try Kashi OS. If you download Kashi OS, you can come over here. It downloads on SourceForge. It took me about 20 minutes on a 50 gigabyte download connection. So that wasn't too bad for SourceForge. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and switch on over to the desktop. Now, if you download Kashi OS, throw it on a USB or open it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you get. I love the theme of it. I really do. I like the subdued. I like the blues. You get a single panel down on the bottom. Now, one thing I did do right off the bat is I went into edit mode, and I made this panel a little bigger because out of the box, it comes a little smaller. I think it comes about like that, and that's a little small for me. It might work for you, but I have to wear glasses as is, so I went ahead and ramped it up a little bit so I could see it better. But even doing that, it still has a really good look to it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And you've got your standard KDE background that once you flip it into a dark mode, it changes all the accents. Now, if you come down to the bottom here, you've got date and time, obviously. You've got your hidden icons, which is your notifications, clipboard, night color control, lock key status, internet, USBs connected, sound, and then, of course, your updates. 
And if you come over here, you've got Dolphin. Let's go ahead and open it up so you can take a peek at it. And like I said, I really love the icon theme they're using here. Some of you might not like it, but I like the more minimalistic looking icon sometimes, especially if you've got a good theme going on in the background. Like this one right here, you've got a little bit of transparency over here. And if you wanted to, of course, you could hide some of these because you don't need them. Let's go ahead and hide it. You get a little bit more room there. And if you wanted to make them icons just a little bigger, you could. Let's pump them up. And that gives you a little better look at the file manager. Dolphin is a great file manager. It's a little bit more feature packed than some of your other file managers. You've got all your usual suspects over here. And of course, you've got your home folders right here. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you come down here. You've got the Kashi browser. Let's go ahead and open that up. And like I said, it's got a Firefox base. And when it opens up, you get a nice view of it. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And I do want to see what search engine you're using. So I want to go ahead and put in eBuzz Central and let's see what they're going to use. And it's doing the search and it looks like it's going to be Google. It's going to be Google search, which is great. You get a lot of the same results that you're going to get with Google, but you're not going to have all the tracking and all the, the stuff in the background that keeps a eye on you and your data and what you're doing. So I kind of like that. So if you download it, definitely take a look at it and see what you think of Google. You can always switch it if you want to. You can switch over to Brave or Sear X or something like that. That's completely up to you. That's the beauty of Linux. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then down here, you've got the Discover Software Center, which I don't really use too much. I'll end up using Octopi. So probably what I'll do is go ahead and unpin that. And then you've got your settings right here. Let's go ahead and open that up. Once that opens up, let's go ahead and maximize that. And like with any KDE, you can come over here to appearance and change it if you want to. I'm going to leave it on breeze dark because I like what's going on here. It looks like they got the Kashi Nord is what we're using, a simple dark theme. And then you can change your application styles and things over here. You've got workspace behavior, startup and shutdown, software update, removable storage, input devices, everything you need over here. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's come over here to the application manager. Let's go ahead and click on it and see kind of what we have out of the box here. You've got all applications, development, you've got QT Assistant, of course, your icon browser, internet, Kashi browser, you've got your multimedia, you've got settings, Kavanta manager, YAD settings. Ah, they got YAD out of the box. That is awesome. If you all don't know about YAD, it's a great tool. You can come over here and pretty much customize width of window dialog, height of your windows, and really change a few things in here that makes the system a little bit more yours. But I do recommend that if you do download it and take it for a test drive, check out YAD settings, preferably in a live mode, because sometimes you want to get the hang of something before you actually install it. So let's go back over here. Let's go down to settings again, then system. You've got Kashi OS Hello, which you open that up. This is what gets introduced when you boot up. I closed it out a while ago. It's got documentation. It's got README, release info, wiki. You got your forums and software right here, project, get involved, development. And then of course you can launch the installer. And if you launch that installer, it says Calamari's install type, offline or online. Let's go ahead and just say online. And what that'll do is it'll give you a few different options when you're installing the operating system that you won't get with the offline version. And it opens up the install log in the background and then it opens up the Kashi OS installer, which is Calamares. You've got welcome, location, keyboard, partitions, desktop you wanna use, packages, users, summary, install, and finish. If you used Calamares, you'll be very familiar with the setup that you have here, other than it's given you the option of what desktop you wanna use. Quite honestly, I would stick with the KDE. That's my personal opinion. That's something for you to take a look at as well. Let's go ahead and close that. Yes, I wanna quit it. And let's close the install log. And then we can come back down here to system. You've got uh, Kachi OS Hello, kernel manager. This is where you're gonna manage your kernels. Now you will get a list of kernels in here. You've got your Kashi Linux Bor, Bor ITO. You can just go down through here. Right now you're running the Kashi OS, Linux Kashi OS 6.0.9. And then you can go down through here and there's a lot of different. There's a Linux Zen, then your TT LTO. So you can pick whatever kernel you want to use, configure it and execute it in here. And then if something does go wrong, you can pop back up and it'll let you know that you can change it if you want to. You've got stables, optimized, long-term, Zen. So you've got a lot of different kernels that you can choose over here. So that's one of the things I like about it. Let's close out of this. 
Let's go ahead and close the hello out because we're not utilizing it anymore. Come back down here, go back to system, and then you got your Kashi OS package installer. This is something kind of what you get in Garuda. After you get done installing, it gives you an option to install a bunch of packages. So let's go ahead and maximize this. Right here, if you want to install audio packages, you come down here and pick which audio packages you want to install. Then you can minimize that, go to browsers. If you like the Kashi browser, but you want to go with something like Firefox instead, you would click on it. And then you could come down to graphics, the same thing. You could get Blender, Darktable, Gigicam, GIMP. Just go through here and select all the applications that you want. Once you've done that, you just pop down here, click install, and they install them all at once. It makes things a lot easier. After using a tool like this on Garuda, I didn't know how much I enjoyed using it until I had to use something that didn't have it, and I had to go through and download all these applications separately. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down here. We're going to go to System. You've got Discover, GR Sync Install, KDE Partition Manager, KSIS Guard. Let's go check Console out real quick. I want to see what kind of resources we're using. Let's go HTOP. They don't have that. Let's go top. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger so you can see. Out of the three gigabytes I have issued to this virtual machine, we're using about 883 at rest, which isn't too bad for a KDE desktop. It's running about the same as what you're getting with a, a base GNOME install nowadays. It's not an XFCE. It's not an LXQT. You know, it's not going to give you a lightweight feel down to about three or 400 megabytes, but I mean, less than a gig, it's definitely light to me. So I'm going to go ahead and close back out of that. Yes, let's close the window. Come back down to system. And we had the console, uh, Octopi. I'm not going to spend too much time on Octopi. Uh, it's a lot like Synaptic Package Manager. It's a type search install program. You would come up here and put in something like Caden Live. It would bring it up right there. All you'd have to do is click on it and click install. And it'll let you know over here, these are some other optional things that you can add to it. If you wanted to pick those, you could, like record my desktop. If you wanted to pick that, media info, click OK. Once that's selected and you have those other optional items selected, just come up here, click the check mark, and it installs it for you. So it makes things really simple. So let's go ahead and close out of Octopi and come back down. System. We've already looked at that, and Utilities, Emoji Selector, Calculator, Cavanta Manager, Text Editor, and of course, Vim. I am very impressed. Four months ago when I looked at this operating system, it was great. It seemed to be snappy. It seemed to be quick. I just wanted to give it a little bit more time to mature, and with this current release, I think they've hit a home run. If you're somebody that likes Arch, you're somebody that doesn't want to use Manjaro or Garuda, or maybe you just want to try something different in the Arch domain. This is definitely an operating system I'd recommend. Go download it. Throw it on a USB. Put it in a virtual machine. Take it for a test drive. I don't really think you have anything to lose because it is a solid distribution. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms. YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only $0.99. Cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4.00. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.